listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. This is the Framework LTC User Conference Post Show Podcast Series in partnership with the Pharmacy Podcast Network. This is part one of the three part series. It was wonderful getting to connect with all the Framework LTC customers, vendors, and partners at this year's user conference. Please enjoy this series and connect with the SoftWriters team at frameworkltc.com. We look forward to seeing you in October 2024 at the ARIA in Las Vegas. And now, here's our host and founder of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, Todd Yuri. Hey, we are here at the 2023 Framework LTC User Conference in Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm here with the host of Framework Focus, Dr. Mark Fulton. Mark, it's great to see you here in Boston. Todd, thank you so much for the wonderful intro. Uh, We are having a great time. This is our second day here in Boston at the Encore in Boston Harbor at the Framework LTC User Conference. This is our 13th annual user conference where we bring together the folks who are leading the long-term care pharmacy industry. We bring together the pharmacists, the owners, the IT professionals, the people who really make long-term care pharmacy happen and work alongside of us as a software provider to help bring better solutions to patients and improve the lives of millions of people every day. There's a theme that keeps being brought up um, throughout the conference, which is the theme of innovation and service. And that goes hand in hand with long-term care pharmacy as we serve some of the most fragile people in our populations throughout the country, our seniors and or people that are institutionalized. And whether whether that's in assisted living, whether it's long-term care, whether it's uh, even home care, which is expanding. I kind of want to stop there for a second and ask about the transition in servicing communities in their homes. And uh, that's because long-term care facilities are starting to become less and less. Um, Beds are not available. Uh, Talk to us about um, the the move forward to servicing um, people in their homes from the experts in long-term care, people that understand what it takes to service day after day um, people who need extra pharmacy care. Absolutely, Todd. Well, there are a few factors out there that are driving this movement to home care. I think at the top end, you have regulations. Uh, We have upcoming staffing regulations, some minimum staffing standards for skilled nursing facilities that CMS is mandating that will go into effect in the near future, uh, supposedly. Now, these things are obviously going to receive pushback from the industry. However, it's estimated that over 75% of long-term care facilities will have to add additional staff to meet these minimum staffing standards. As a result of that, along with the increased amount of individuals who require long-term care, you know, as part of their treatment program, many folks are opting to receive that care in the home. So what that means for our customers, for the long-term care pharmacy, is it's requiring a pretty significant transition from delivery right? Delivery and logistics, getting medicines instead of to a facility where you have lots of people in one space, but delivering individually to each patient's residence. Also, communication is a big factor there, right? Being able to communicate with the patient's caregiver, often in that setting, it's a family member. Uh, They may not have 24-7 round-the-clock care. And making sure that the pharmacy can accurately and consistently communicate with the patient and their caregiver about the medications they need, delivery logistics, managing all of the changes and the treatment progression of those individual patients. So I'm excited to hear this because we know, based on talking with a lot of our community pharmacy owners, um, that they they can handle a lot of the assisted living-like Uh, services that are necessary because uh, a lot of these um, people that are in their homes that don't either have the money or the means or even if a long-term care facility um, doesn't have room uh, to take them in, having them at home, as you said, uh, can present 
um, some challenges, but it can also present some advantages. I think where the soft writers, framework LTC, uh, technology platform, as well as the experience of your organization and the pedigree of, of soft writers in long-term care, is that world of the skilled nursing um, um, movement. And my question uh, to you, and I'd love your opinion on this, is will we see home care start accepting and start growing out some of that skilled nursing facets of, of needs and then having a home care organization kind of partner with the long-term care pharmacy um, in order to deliver those services? I think we're absolutely going to see something like that, Todd. In my opinion, based on the folks in the industry I've spoken with, what we're moving towards is an environment where skilled nursing care can be provided in the home. What's enabling that is technology, we have better technology for monitoring patients at home, recording and sending back data, better automation, more devices that are able to be placed in the patient's home to communicate effectively both with the providers, you know, the prescribers, as well as the pharmacy. Another thing is the type of drugs. You know, right now, the standard of care for many things is on high dollar injectables. We have a lot of biologics in the market. The specific type of product mix that you need to service a long-term care patient, remember, these are patients who are on upwards of 12 to 16 different medications a day. They may, they may need more acute care style medications that, uh, you know, than what you would find in a typical community pharmacy. And so long-term care pharmacies are perfectly situated to provide the up-to-date you know, on-demand care that these patients need, oftentimes 24-7. Yep. Um, so our customers are very well suited from a operations standpoint to grow out to service these customers. Um, so what we may see in the future, back to your question, is a situation where you have a, a long-term care provider who is centrally located, say like a group of nurses and healthcare workers who then will uh, go out into the community and service the patient's homes. But you may have a central hub for where they keep the EHRs, where they do the record keeping. Yep. Um, think of it more like an assisted living or a skilled nursing, but instead of patients' rooms in the same building, their rooms are their individual residences yep. uh, around the area. Throughout the community. I'm excited about this three-part series that we're doing in collaboration with Framework Focus, part of Soft Writers, a Soft Writers podcast. We're going to be featuring uh, the voices and the ideals and the insights of some of our technology partners, as well as some of our actual users um, using Framework LTC. I can't wait to get into this uh, with you, Mark, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. Uh, me too, Todd. Thanks so much for being our host today. Todd is hosting our conference and working as our MC, and we are extremely excited and thrilled to partner together to help bring the voice of long-term care pharmacy out into the world, right? really promoting these heroes that work behind the scenes in closed door environments and you know giving a voice to pharmacists which is so important to me absolutely okay let's go We are here at the Framework LTC 2023 User Conference. I'm here with Kara. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing fabulous. This is your very first podcast. Very first podcast and first user conference. So Well, doubled up I in love it. Yeah. I'm loving it as well. I love being back. I was sharing with you that Guardian Pharmacy uh, Services was very special to me because it was the very first time when I used to work for soft writers in sales and business development, that was my very first uh, account that was multi-site. Yes. I think it was four right out of the gate. Um, so tell me about your um, experience here at the user conference. What has been most uh, interesting to you in learning yeah. about more about what Framework does for long-term care pharmacy? Yeah, absolutely. I came from pharmacy where we utilized Framework um, as our software tool. So it's been fascinating to me to talk to other pharmacies across the nation because everyone uses the tool differently, um, which is its beauty. Also makes it sometimes hard to grasp the large expanse of what right. it can do. So I've enjoyed chatting 
working with the other pharmacies, learning their best tips and tricks and how they use it to affect their workflow. Um, and then the vendors that are here, are you learn a lot from them as well. So it's nice to be have everybody in one room together and compare notes. I agree. You know, this is about build, partner, and serve. Absolutely. And I think that the theme that Scott Beatty shared with us at the very beginning of today's um, conference kickoff is very special because we're building the next-gen long-term care yes. pharmacy environments that's going to include home care. Um, we're partnering with so many different organizations that's resident and obviously um, yep. very amplified here, yep. uh, having multiple uh, technologies and service providers come together. And yep. we're serving, which is the most important part of pharmacy, which is our patients. And how frail that the long-term yeah. care and senior care population is, and sometimes the only people that are talking with them and caring about them on a daily basis is their pharmacist. Yes. So I think that's really um, super special. You have an interesting background because you were actually going into facilities uh, yeah. serving and, and selling services that were pharmacy services. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's an interesting and difficult connection for pharmacy to make. Um, nurses and pharmacists often need the same things, but they speak a very different language. And those nurses in the facilities really become your primary partners. So understanding what's challenging for them from a medication management standpoint and, and is a time suck for them, frankly, and trying to get all those meds to all the people um, really allows you at the pharmacy level to provide them what they need instead of forcing them to fit the pharmacy model, which of course with framework we could do because it is such a facility centric tool that we could really at each facility cater to what that they needed specifically to serve their populations. Um, so for me, it was an invaluable tool to both grow our business and then continue to serve well the folks that were loyal to us that we had been serving for a long time. Kara, thank you so much for being part of the Framework LTC 2023 User Conference Post Show. This is special to me, and, and actually that tie-in to Guardian is one of our most favorite clients and customers of yep. Framework. I think that's Lots really special as well. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. You're so welcome. Hey, we're wrapping up uh, the Framework uh, Conference, Framework LTC User Conference. We can't wait to see everybody in... Vegas. Next in year Vegas again. in Back 2024. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. The area. Yes. Or Ari. Is it pronounced Ari or I Aria? I think it's Aria, but don't <laughs> quote me. <laughs> well, we want to see everyone there. 2024, the Framework LTC User Conference. Thank you so much for being part of this. You listeners, you pharmacists, long term care um, champions, you're why we do what we do. So thank you. Hey, what's the best way to optimize the cost of your logistics and being able to increase accuracy, consistency, and transparency? I am here with Dan with SDSRX. Welcome to Framework LTC 2023 U User Conference Post Show. Dan, how are you? Hey, I'm great, Todd. How are you doing? Good. You know, I am uh, so lucky to be um, in the booth here at Framework LTC 2023. This is how I started my pharmacy conference, I mean my pharmacy experience way back in 2004. And so much has changed. And part of what has changed is the need to have systems that are connected into our pharmacy management systems that make sense with delivery so that when we know when are we going to get our meds, when are we going to get our next shipment, what's going to happen, how much is this going to cost us, so on and so forth. So tell our listeners a little bit about your organization and how you're helping to advance long-term care pharmacy. Uh, sure, Todd. So the SDS, really, uh, our priority is, is to provide the right treatment to the right patient at the right time. And through our use of technology, uh, we're able to deliver on the expectations that our customers place upon us. Um, you know, whether it's confirming that we have the right capacity, uh, the ability to pick up on time with a professional branded driver, whether it's our brand or our customer's brand, um, and be able to you know, deliver at the facility or in a residential care setting. To, to meet the needs of that specific patient while trapping any regulatory requirements, uh, compliance issues around proof of delivery, controlled substances, et cetera, um, but, but trying to do so in a way that you know, delivers accountability upon us 
for the pharmacy, consistency in the performance of the delivery network, and, and transparency in the way that we're performing. Right? So, and we have several tools that we've developed that allow us to be able to do that. Um, you know, we, we do utilize third-party software to manage the delivery environment. Um, but, but one of the things that really sets us apart is the infrastructure uh, focus of leadership um, within our organization um, and the way that we've responded uh, inside of the market with forming partnerships, whether it's with pharmacy information platforms like Framework LTC or whether it's in other third-party software applications like VirtuScript um, that, that allow us to provide a solution through the service offering um, that, that ultimately is scalable um, and something that our, our customers can, can count on. Is this, um, is this specific to one sector of pharmacy or are you involved in retail as well as long-term care or closed door? So primarily in closed door. Um, when SDS was first formed, founded, um, McKesson was actually our first customer. Okay. We worked inside of a distribution model. Uh, from there, as we were delivering into pharmacy, what we realized was that the, the pharmacy had very similar business requirements and the same needs um, and, and the ability to have a partner who could use technology, provide scanning, visibility, transparency throughout the delivery process uh, was just as important, if not more so, um, inside of the pharmacy sector. And so we grew organically in long-term care. Um, you know, and if you look at our customers today, a uh, very diverse population, and, and as you see um, the care setting shift or acuity creep inside of patient population, we're delivering in the traditional skilled care facilities. We're delivering to ALF, we're delivering to IDD in, in a home setting, or we're delivering in a residential setting, very similar to a retail model. Um, but, but today, from a pharmacy perspective, I'd suggest that 85% of our customers are, are closed door. Okay. Um, on the other side of our business, we also work in precision medicine um, and nuclear pharmacy, and, and we're shipping for all of the seven major manufacturers and, and producers of radioactive pharmaceutical product as well. Okay. So um, when I think of it, I can, I can see how the operator of the pharmacy will want to see the tracking information. They'll want to know when it left their building, they'll want to know when the delivery happened. But is, are you also sharing this data with the actual facility that is getting the medication? Do they Are they able to look at a, um, a screen of some sort and see where their med is at? We, I, we believe that there's an opportunity uh, to provide visibility to the end recipient. I think the biggest challenge inside of the facility environment is who should receive okay. that visibility and access. Yep. Is, is it the nurse? Is it the, the DON? Who's on site? How do you manage that every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Okay. So when I think of the expansion of long-term care, we have our assisted living environments. We have skilled nursing, which I think, in my opinion, is even more critical because of the actual meds that those individuals are going through, sometimes very serious cases. Now we're moving into home care expansion. How will SDS help a long-term care pharmacy expand outside of the facility and into neighborhoods, into communities? Well, I think in part it comes from our experience in executing residential delivery today. I mean, the first question that, that we get from customers who are looking at home care is how do we think about the geography or how do we think about the frequency of delivery and what those touch points look like. And, and we've been working in those environments for the, several years now um, and are able to help create the, the zones, the environment, the infrastructure um, to be able to execute. So um, what what would you say is the, is the best way to, I don't know, figure out um, if SDS is best for a organization? Do you have to have so much volume before it pays itself off? And where's the ROI measure come in? If someone's listening right now and they're like, boy, I'm really interested in this delivery um, mechanism and technology, who, who should reach out to you? What size pharmacy? Well, it's interesting because it's not about bed count. Okay. Um, it, it's really a, about the geographic constraints, the time, the miles, the complexity of the delivery environment, okay. how frequently do things change. You know, more often than not, it's an operator who's frustrated with the time that they're spending 
managing their delivery environment or the risk associated with putting employees on the road. And so that would be one way I, you could think about it. Um, you know, the other could be that you have an existing delivery partner, you've already made the decision that you want to outsource, but you have concerns around scaling to capacity, yep. um, or that the consistency isn't there, or you really know that you need better visibility and maybe an integration into your pharmacy system, um, or you'd like to see reports that don't come in an Excel spreadsheet or that don't come in a Word document, yeah. and they're available in real time. Those are some of the things that we typically hear from our customers when they're interested in, in making a change. Dan Kennedy, SDSRX, what's the best way to reach out to your organization if a listener wants to engage with you? You, know, you can certainly come to our website and, and hit contact us, um, you know, and we'll have information available through the podcast link, yeah. and, and you can reach out to us anytime. Yep, if you want to go to sds-rx.com, that's sds-rx.com, and ask for Dan Kennedy. Hey, Dan, thank you so much for being part of the post show. Hey, Todd, appreciate the time. Thank you. Hey, if you've been part of the pharmacy community for any more, I don't know, two, five years, you've heard of GeriMed and the importance of organizations that are supporting the innovation of pharmacy and how it's speeding up. We see the role of the pharmacist changing, and we see different sectors of pharmacy needing more assistance. I'm here with Karen Sims from GeriMed. Karen, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Framework LTC User Conference 2023, um, this has been a great group. Uh, we're here at the second day. I want to understand, what does GeriMed do in order to advance the profession of pharmacy as well as supporting long-term care pharmacists? Well, we do a number of things to try to um, assist long-term care pharmacies. We offer a variety of reports. Um, we look at their billing and that to let them know if they didn't bill correctly, because as you know, if they don't bill the correct codes, they don't get the correct reimbursement. So we provide reports on that. Uh, we have a lot of advocacy. Susan Rodas, as you know, is, yes. as, uh, we're real involved with NCPDP and NCPA. And uh, just, you know, anything that we can bring to help them better care for patients and um, help out their pharmacy. So a shout out to Susan Rhodes. She's been on several panels with me um, in collaboration with organizations like RxSafe. Something that she taught me was how the next wave of pharmacy growth could be coming from home care and balancing between the traditional long-term care pharmacy and the traditional community pharmacy. And there's a fusion in the middle. Kind of tell us about what's happening to bring more community pharmacy to long-term care and to enhance long-term care to start servicing into the home. Yes, well, we're trying to get um, more PBMs on board with recognizing long-term care. Uh, we are partnered with um, NCPA and NCPDP to try to get some regulation around that. We feel that it is going toward um, home care. You know, a lot of patients and families, they want their family members at home. Yep. And there is, you know, and we feel that it is long-term care if you're delivering to the pharmacy out of necessity, not out of convenience, if they can't get there themselves. If you're doing some kind of um, consulting, you know, and you're looking over their medications, then we believe that that is long-term care. And we are we're trying to get a lot of uh, the payers and CMS and the PBMs, you know, on, on board with that. If you were to think specifically long-term care pharmacy of what some of the greatest challenges are for those operators right now that GeriMed is really helping to remove those obstacles. Kind of give us an example of some stories that real life examples of maybe what GeriMed has done to help in a long-term care pharmacy. Um, sure. We um, we have a lot of, uh, especially with Combo Med, are you familiar with our Combo Med program? Yes. So um, we, there's a lot of uh, retail pharmacies out there, as you know, that's doing a lot of long-term care, or some long-term care patients, especially in rural areas. So we have we um, offer a lot of services to them. We offer a lot of um, education to where they can get involved more in long-term care and how to better serve those patients. Um, and we're, we try to stay very knowledgeable on what's going on with the PBMs and all the legislation and everything that would affect pharmacy and long-term care patients. How does an organization that's listening to the post show, um, how do they, what's the best way to get a hold of, of GeriMed? What, what's the website or what do you, what do you want to push a listener to engaging GeriMed with? Sure. We, um, you can uh, find us online um, at www.gerimedgso.com. Uh, we're located in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, 
you could uh, send an email to um, our VP of uh, sales as co-page, and that's cpage at jerrymidgsl.com. Or myself, Kay Sims, or us. Uh, us, Rodas, Susan Rodas, we could get them to the right person also. And on LinkedIn. I've linked up with you and Susan on LinkedIn, so definitely use that platform to reach out to the Jerry Med team. We're looking forward to seeing you at NCPA in Kissimmee, or Kissimmee, oh, which is basically Orlando. <laughs> so can't wait to see you guys there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, I'm here with Derek Taylor with Infinix Healthcare. Derek, welcome to Framework LTC's uh, 2023 User Conference Post Show. Thank you. Happy to be here. So, you know, this is a time where, unlike 20 years ago when I got into long-term care pharmacy, every dollar spent is more, more crucial to operating a long-term care pharmacy than ever before. So the efficiencies that come out of Framework LTC, for example, are more important now than when I first started selling the system, which was just an honor to be part of the software's team. So I want to understand what your organization does and letting our listeners know what you do to help innovate the long-term care pharmacy. Yeah, so Infinix Healthcare, we provide remote support uh, for a lot of the standard processes in pharmacy. So uh, billing billing functions, uh, data entry, new facility onboarding, a lot of those uh, tasks which are routine and mundane um, that that are something that you know help, help your business grow, something that really affect your bottom line from staffing. And uh, so we, we provide well-trained team members that customize our processes to yours. Um, and day in, day out, take care of, you know, help support our clients from that end. So is it specific to one platform, for example, Framework LTC, or are you helping um, with other systems as well? Yeah, uh, we, we are kind of agnostic with systems, um, but we have a lot of Framework LTC clients. Um, we, we're one of their partner vendors. We've worked with them for a decade. Um, and so we, you know, not we don't have favorites, but yes, we work really well with with Framework. <laughs> we, we don't have favorites, but we really like Framework uh, LTC. <laughs> it is great software, and yeah, uh, but we do, yeah. We, I mean, some of our clients have their own proprietary software, um, and then also there will be secondary tools that they use. Um, so we'll work with different uh, EMR systems as well to get, for example, when we're doing admissions and census work. A lot of times we're we're dealing with different EMR vendors or different, you know, uh, basically whatever setup you have uh, will work within your systems. Okay. It sounds like your key to um, success is providing a long-term care pharmacy scalability oh, much sure. faster. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, so tell us about how, if a pharmacist engaged you, what's the process in getting in, in really to get going? Yeah. So, so first off, we, we will consult with you and see where your needs are. Um, we recognize that like you know, some pharmacies are really good on, you know, order entry, but they're struggling on the billing side. Or maybe they're doing good staffing-wise, but they see they just signed a bunch of contracts that are coming up. Um, and they're concerned about how are we going to onboard this business, and then how are we going to maintain that additional volume. Um, so we sit down with you and, and talk about the different ways, you know, different tasks and different areas where we're good to help, and areas where sometimes they're not good to help. You know, it, that's really what we... Uh, bring to the table from, I'm a long-term care pharmacist that started this, you know, 15 years ago. It's like, I, I know what processes work well and which ones don't. And, and uh, kind of, we guide you through how we can help because remote workers, um, you know, and I think a lot of pharmacies understand this, this now because of COVID and having their employees work remotely. Yep. Um, production, communication, transparency, and, you know, QA, all of those things. Um, doing it remotely and is something we, we're experts in, right? We've yep. done that. And so we can help guide the pharmacies through how that all works as well. Because a, a lot of people are like, well, how will it work, right? Or right. how would it work for me? And so we really do sit down and, and walk through and, and customize to where your needs are, that information. There. Well, I appreciate you being part of the Framework LTC user meeting 2023 um, post show. And um, we will talk with you next year. Sounds great. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Don't miss the next episode in this three-part series of the Framework LTC User Conference Post Show.